Hello Husky fans, I am Rachel Herzog, in-studio host at Husky Productions, and joining me today, straight out of the H Omaha pod, is from the rink live, Mick Hatton. Mick, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, hey, no problem. Thanks for having me on here, Rachel. Yeah, of course. So first of all, before we get into, into anything, tell me a little bit about how good it feels to be finally be back home from the pod. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it was great to watch, uh, you know, all that hockey. I mean, and if I wasn't at the game, I mean, I was watching it on NCHC.TV. And uh, so I, I saw, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I watched every minute of every game, <laughs> but I did, uh, I did see at least uh, chunks of almost every game. It took a lot of steps to get to that point, but it was something college hockey has never seen before, having – a pod like scenario and it was completely successful all 38 games were played in 20 days so can you kind of touch on how that was able to work out so perfectly for everyone well i think you know you have to tip your hat to you know the commissioner you know josh fenton and, and then all his staff i mean the the amount of time that went into the planning and uh you know for, for to pull that event off uh, i i can't even really fathom because you know they took a bit of a risk with this I mean there's a lot of there are a lot of moving parts to it if it didn't work out let's say that you know let's say they get in three days into this and somebody tests positive well what do you wh where would they have been at that point you exactly because everybody would have been exposed to them I mean you're playing every team you're around every single person so it was a huge risk yeah, and uh, they they were able to pull it off, and it, it was interesting too. In talking with with Seamus and, and uh, Nick, uh, just about how the, there were three different teams that were in uh, the, the hotel that they were at. So it was St. Cloud State, Western Michigan, and Minnesota Duluth. And he said each one had a different floor, so you didn't go on anybody else's floor, and they kind of see each other kind of in passing, but then they. You know, there, there was a little bit of a, a common area, but uh, it sounded like there was like a ping pong table downstairs that, that everybody kind of gathered around. Yep. But, uh, they were playing cornhole in the hallways and stuff. Yeah. I remember <laughs> interviewing a couple guys about that too. So they definitely found ways to keep busy regarding like extracurricular activities. I mean, as safe as they could have been, they got to do fun things with their teammates still, which was good. Well, and, and one of the things that uh, actually I'm going to write about a little bit is, uh, you know, typically when when you talk to a lot of players now, well, what do you like to do in your off time? And you know, a lot of time, you know, it, it's video games. I mean, yeah. that's just that's just kind of our culture and everything else right now. But uh, it was it, it's interesting to hear kind of the things non-video game that, that that they were doing, right? Uh, you know, uh, Nick was Nick Perbix was talking about. Uh, how he and Kyler Kupka were would play a game of chess before they go over to the rink every day. Get the brain uh, turning. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know the uh, I, I know talking with Joey Lamoro, you know jo Joey, you know brought a big puzzle over. So there were like six or seven of the guys that were working on a puzzle together, and then they they got done with that one. They had to order another one. And kind of touching back on the games a little bit you were obviously there for a bunch of the games, but the atmosphere is obviously a lot different considering there were no fans at any of the games. So what was that atmosphere like being at a college game and having no fans there? Uh, you know, it was, it was a, a little bit startling uh, maybe at first. Do you think those cardboard cutouts really made any difference in the stands? <laughs> I know a lot of people paid $50 to have their faces there, but do you think that actually made an impact for the players? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I thought it was kind of a cool thing. No, Saint Cloud, from St. Cloud State's standpoint, they had some fun with that. There was, you know, uh, St. Cloud State in, in years past, or whatever, you know, you can make big head cutouts or whatever. Yep. And so there was a, this big head cutout of Nick Oliver from when he played at St. Cloud State. No way. And Brian Demaine and Jeremiah Minkle were taking uh, Nick's head and they were putting it in different parts of the arena. Yeah before each game so then they would so there there were times where they'd they tweet out a photo and say where's ollie and yeah then, playing a little game of i spy throughout the rink yes so so there were some fun things with the cutouts even yeah so fingers crossed everybody's home and safe and <laughs> so we can come back to the herb brooks national hockey center on the second and have a great start to the second half of the season yeah, so let's, let's cross our fingers that we're going to see a lot more great hockey here. Yeah, 
Well, thank you so much for joining me, Mick, today. It was really fun talking with you. Oh, I really enjoyed it. Thanks so much, Rachel. Thanks for everyone. Thanks everyone for watching. For Mick Hatton from The Rink Live, I'm Rachel Herzog and happy holidays, everyone.